Hi all, Massbound Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today is my day number 10 in isolation, and today we take a look at current measurements. Measuring current can be done in many different ways. Normally, you would just grab your multimeter like this, you can measure up to 10 amps of AC and DC current, but often this will not be sufficient. We need to measure some higher currents. Now, I have a wide selection of different yeah, topologies to measure current here and um, also different sorts of current because current is just not just current. There is DC current and there is AC current. And then you have ranging in the AC spectrum from low to high frequency. And somewhere in the middle of maybe 400 hertz um, and upwards, you will not be able to use your normal multimeters anymore because the frequency simply is too high for it to sample that uh, simply because the, the circuit is not made for it. So over here in the what we can call the old school section is where we have the good old big current transformers that just transform a current from a large one goes through the middle of this transformer and it has a ratio 1500 to 5 amps and that is because it's a standard that very uh, a large amount of these uh, current meters that you can find are rated for a 5 amp current input. Now this is a millivolt meter but just for illustration. Because the millivolt meter is another way of measuring current and that is by use of a shunt, a shunt resistor. Now this is a eBay shunt as you can see it's a little crude and such but as we can read on the side maybe you cannot see it but it's hammered into the side of the metal here, 50 amp, 75 millivolt. So once you have 75 or have 50 amps passing through this conductor, you will have a voltage drop of 75 millivolt across it. And this you can measure. The same goes for this. This is a much more professional and more expensive one from a thermovolt, rated for 120 amps at 60 millivolt, 0.5% accuracy. Now these are, of course, small, nice uh, pieces of uh, equipment, but if you really want to measure some serious current, you will have to get one of these. This is a good one kilogram of copper and brass, 60 millivolt at 2,500 amps. And the good thing about this is you can actually use this as a pulse uh, current transfer or pulse current measurements as well. As long as you can live with not being isolated from the thing you are measuring on, Moving on to the more industrial appliances, something like uh, frequency inverters, power supplies, all kinds of three-phased um, equipment, you will find these kinds of current transformers in. Now there is the regular kind that just is a current transformer. It's a two-legged transformer, so you will have to use a resistor um, to get a voltage out of this. The same goes for these, just a uh, two wires in and out, normal current transformers. Then there is the Hall effect sensor. So the Hall effect sensor is that you have a small IC or silicon um, device sitting in here that can measure the magnetic flux that is going through the ring, the right ring core here. And it's just simply inserted into a slot in the ring. Now this needs some um, logic to convert the uh, the signal out to a current you are measuring. So here Ohm's law does not simply apply as it would do over here. Now this comes in all kinds of packages. Here's a three-phased version where it just comes out with a uh, yeah, supply and the three signals and some common signal, or common, common ground. You find these uh, LEM um, sensors almost everywhere you see power electronics. Now this one comes with a small power supply circuit sitting on it, so it's probably giving out something like 0 to 10 volt uh, according to the 200 amp rating. To the left side we have the more exciting and interesting ways of measuring current, where we come to the current monitors. Now these are some expensive and very highly specced laboratory equipment that you can find yeah, you see this, this one is broken and the BNC, BNC was pretty busted, so I, I got this cheap off eBay. It gives out 0, 0.0 
volts per amp and these are usually rated for a maximum of 200 or 500 volts and by that this is a 50,000 amp current monitor. Now I have a few different of those. Um, there's also a 0.1 volts per amp so this is a 5 kiloamp transformer. The same goes for the uh, larger one here but what's what makes this different is that it can be opened up so you will not have to open up your circuit in order to insert this current monitor. Very handy when uh, you want to measure on, on an existing circuit you do not want to take apart. Then I also have this uh, current monitor from uh, Ion Physics. The others here are from Pearson and they are really the state of the art uh, in current monitors. But if you want to measure some real high currents, you will have to find something maybe a bit cheaper than this because that will cost you. Because a, a IPC current transformer that will do one millivolt per amp, and I think this is spec for 500 volts, so this can actually do 500 kiloamps. Very nice uh, pulse uh, application transformer, but the voltage. Um, the, the amp time product and all that, there's of course some more limitations to a smaller transformer uh, to what you can measure and for how long compared to the bigger ones. Now these are pretty expensive, so you can of course also make your own. These go way up into the megahertz and above region, but if you are measuring something in the sub megahertz region, you can do it yourself with something like this. This is a cascaded current transformer has uh, two uh, N30 material um, ring for right ring cores at some 5000 AL value. It's uh, cascaded the, in the way that it has 33 turns, goes through the second one, which also has 33 turns. That gives a radio of 1 to 1089. So roughly if you put a wire through here and you pass a thousand amps, you will get one amp out here. Put that across a suitable uh, resistor and you have a voltage measurement of the current going through here. That's the basic principle in a dual resonant solid state Tesla coil driver where we use these. Now let's say I only have this 0 0.1 volts per amp but I need it to be 0 0.01 volts per amp. There's also actually a small trick that you can also cascade Transformers like this that uh, okay, maybe I won't do 10 turns, but let's just say I do one two Three Four and five turns through this ring core If I put that through here Connect these two wires put my primary wire through here that I want to measure on I now have, have a 0 0.02 volts per amp. I do also suffer a bit on the whole frequency bandwidth, but that's a pretty uh, good trade-off uh, that you can have a higher amp rating, but go down in frequency and such. Easy to do and uh, won't cost, cost you much, and you probably also have some ferrite cores lying around you can use for it. Now, um, this was all pulsed currents or AC currents. You could de do DC currents with the um, shunt resistors. For the DC currents, I really recommend getting a cheap clamp-on meter because you can get something like this from, now this is just from Bielterma, and it can measure up to 1000 amp DC. I mean, there's nothing else you could build or even put together yourself that can justify not just getting one of these cheap meters because it is just claim it on, reach out your up to 1000 amp DC, get on with your life. It's first when you get up into the high frequency current measurements that you should invest in some proper gear. And all the older stuff here you can salvage from many different kinds of applications, like main distribution panels, large machines, induction furnaces of the older kind and such. But this is what I wanted to tell you about measuring current. So until tomorrow, see ya.